If Yankee patrolling these wilds is an unexpected surprise, whenever they seek, they'll not hesitate to kill us if we stand in their way. Oh! Did you... Did you hear that? Okay, well, there's a lot of nature here. Um, hey, can I ask you a question, Gil? Um, I was wondering about that mighty lord in your story. Ah, oh, yes. Carsus. Yeah, Carsus. Carsus was perhaps the most powerful wizard that ever lived. The child who would be a god, the elves called him. And he tried. With a spell of his own devising, he endeavored to usurp in one fell swoop the power of the goddess of magic. Mistril, she was called then. Imagine what it must have felt like to be a god. To know yourself, to be untouchable. To be mistaken. As Carsus aimed his spell at her, she began to unravel. And with her, the entire weave. Too late did he realize what he had unleashed. It would have been the end of everything had not Mistral sacrificed herself. The goddess of magic is all magic. By dying, the entire weave was lost and the spell that challenged a god failed. It was the end of Mistral. The end of Carsus and the end of an entire civilization. As the child who would be a god was turned to stone, his empire came crashing down around him. The floating cities of Netheril were no more. An event that came to be known as Carsus's folly. So, for a bit of time, just all magic was gone? Like, completely gone? For a spell. Mistral was reborn as Mistra. Upon her return, the weave returned with her. Now, so many centuries later, I try to follow in the footsteps of Carsus. Not to destroy Mistra, but to prove my love for her. I try to control only a fraction of the magic that was unleashed that fateful day. I merely sought to return one tiny diamond to an imperfect crown. Gale's folly, one might call it. History. Repetition. It's the way things go. And now, with everything, you have this nether east magic in you because of... Well, I wouldn't call it Gale's folly, but... Your words, not mine! If it starts to take over, what will you do? If it should ever come to that, if I ever know I am no longer able to stop it, I will do anything I can to ensure no one but me pays for my mistakes. I will find the remotest place on the surface of Faerun, or perhaps far below in the depths of the Underdark. I will await that death alone. Gail. I promise I will not betray your trust. You kept me by your side despite the menace that I am. You're not a menace. If worse comes to worst, I will be long gone before the curtain falls. All right. Just know, I don't think you're a menace or anything like that, but I'm going to go check in with some other people. Ah, oh, Carsus's folly. What a story. A starian? If the gith are looking for that artifact... Yes. ...then we may have something valuable on our hands. We have and to. And it's a powerful weapon to boot. Things are starting to look very interesting. Yes. Yes, they are. So, a starian... Can I know a little bit more about you and your history? Why do you insist on exhuming the past? Because I'm trying to get to know I you? I was a slave. A vampire spawn. Kept by the Tsar family. Perhaps I still am. I was never able to resist their commands. But now, I've been conveniently lost. They won't ever control me again. No. No, they won't. And I'll help you make sure that that happens. But I'm going to go check and see if everybody else is doing well. Have fun reading or whatever it is you do. Plot. Maybe. Hi, Scratch. How you doing, honey? Hey, Halson. You're here. Oakfather's blessings to you. How has everything been? I'm... Can I ask you a quick question? How do you know so much about the parasites? I studied one up close. Oh. Closer than most would care to be to those things. I can imagine. A drow attacked me and I defended myself. 
Afterwards, I was able to examine the tadpole that emerged. Hideous, and? but fascinating. Yeah, they are. They are. Like nothing else in nature, I'm glad to say. All right, well... I'm glad to have known that. Thank you. It was fantastic chatting about the fact that you looked at a tadpole up close and personal. Ooh, kind of thing. Will, what are you doing up here? The Gif Knight is as merciless as the dragon he rides. Yes, he is. That we still have our heads is nothing short of a miracle. Yeah, big miracle. Hey, speaking of things that don't seem possible what was it like being the son of a grand duke that i didn't know that you were the son of a grand duke until like you know a couple hours ago not so enchanting as you'd think oh the poor tears the cold wells they were the blue bloods hosting the fancy balls and drinking from gold goblets father's the son of a blacksmith born with barely a coin in the coffers he made a name for himself among the flaming fist Brave as Balderan, stubborn as a deep rofe, daring, outspoken, but hardly posh. <laughs> I spent more time dueling with father than I did rubbing elbows with lords. Not to say I didn't develop a taste for good wine and a talent for courtly dance. Wait, courtly dance? Huh, I didn't... You know? You know? That sounds like it could be fun. I haven't done a, and I quote, courtly dance. Uh, was it? No. I mean, I kind of impersonated one at that one perform, but it, it wasn't real. Like, it was just, you know, it, <laughs> uh, never mind. Let's not talk about that one night. And now you're the Blade of Frontiers. It's uh, kind of a big change, huh? Yes and no. Father taught me the four pillars of power. Courage, insight, strategy, justice. He reckoned I'd follow in his footsteps. First as a fist marshal, then as a duke. Vanquish evil, maintain order, save the world. But a duke makes bedfellows with more monsters than he slays. Father called it diplomacy. I called it hypocrisy. In the frontiers, there is no posturing, no diplomacy. I slay monsters, I don't consort with them. Even if I might look like one. I think we've both come to the uh, joint conclusion, though, that you're not, in fact, a monster. So there is that. But listen, one last question while we're talking about the whole Blade of Frontiers thing. How did you become the Blade? My father once said, one does not pursue a champion's life. One merely answers its call. So you answered so the call? So it was for me. Ah. After my exile, I was hunting near the Cloakwood. I heard a child crying out from a lone farmstead. I found him in the fields flanked by goblins. His mother's corpse bled into the soil next to him. Oh no. I don't remember much of the battle, but I remember drying the boy's tears after. Oh, that poor child. That, and then did you? Wait, hold on. What happened to the boy? I left him with his uncles. Five years on, and he's flourishing. Oh, Will. If only every child was so lucky. Agreed. I mourn the ones I could never save, whose cries I never heard. In the boy's tears, I finally saw the suffering wrought by the villains of the wild. The frontiers demanded a blade, and so I heeded. Will, that's actually fantastic. That's... Very noble of you. Um, and then, is that how you lost your eye then in the goblin battle to save the child? It was an even bloodier day. What? And a stronger foe. How many bloody it's battles have you been in? It's made from pure bloodstone, oh. carved from the Galena Mountains just north of the Moon Sea. A reminder that sometimes blood must be shed and sacrifices must be made. Ah. But that story is reserved for lifetime friends and karma days. Okay, fair enough. I will talk to you soon. Thank you for telling me your story, Will. All right, who else haven't I talked to yet? Oh, Carlac? What's wrong, Carlac? Hey, soldier, I... <sighs> well, I'm not feeling so good. What happened? My engine. It's getting worse. 
Feels like it's going to burst out of my chest. Oh no. <sighs> we need to catch up with Damon. See if he's thought of a way to fix this thing. If it can be fixed. Absolutely. No, no, no. I Yeah, um we'll we'll find him. I promise. I'm sure we will. <sighs> but in case we don't, a bit of advice. Yeah. You leave your left flank wide open. I do? If I'm ever not around to cover it, you may find yourself on the wrong side of a goblin spear one of these days. Okay. Th Thank you? I didn't even know. How do I not even know these things about myself, but you do? Thank you, but I gotta work on that. We gotta get you to da Damon when we find him again kind of thing. May the darkness protect you. Just wanted to check in, see how you were doing, anything that you want to chat about. Actually, I feel like I don't really get to ever talk to you about you. Can I get to know you a bit? You already know my biggest secrets. What more can you ask? Um, I don't know if you know this about me, but I'm a bard. I can ask legitimately a mountain's worth of questions. But tell me something about yourself outside of Char and the tadpoles kind of thing. What? Besides yeah. my life's calling and the greatest problem I've ever faced? Yeah. Well, I like night orchids and can't swim. Is that the sort of thing you meant? Yes, actually. A hundred percent. A night orchid, though. I don't actually know if I've ever seen one. I feel like maybe I've heard of it in passing, but you'll have to point out one to me the next time we pass one, if we ever do. It's a deal. Perfect. All right. And anything else you want to share? No. I can't. Quite literally, I mean. With my memories suppressed, I can't betray Shah's secrets. And I can't remember much of myself either. Oh. If I manage to return to Baldur's Gate and fulfill Shah's mission, then my memories will be restored. Okay. That seems a little extreme, though, having your memories suppressed, doesn't it? Like, what the heck kind of information did you know prior to all this? Of course. It is an act of faith, not to be undertaken lightly. Shah will reward me when I succeed. Okay. Yeah, um... Of course. If, if that's what, you know, I support you in this and I'll help you however I can and we'll get you back to Baldur's Gate, but I'll talk to you soon. Lazel, anything I should know about the crash before we actually get into the crash? Because I think that that's probably a good thing to know. Speak quickly. Nice to see you too. How are you doing this evening? No, okay, I will leave you to it. I'm gonna get some sleep. We'll visit the crash first thing in the morning. It'll be great. It's gonna be awesome. Who's excited to go visit the Githyanki? Me. It's I you. I promised I'd be back. Yeah, you did. Don't worry. I have things under control. For now. For now? You haven't been using the parasite's power. You think you don't need it. But things haven't gone as you expected. You hoped a druid as powerful as Holtin might be able to remove your tadpole. But he couldn't. You're desperate to be rid of it. Understandable. But you're looking for solutions in the wrong places. Okay, listen. I have problems with this whole, like, using the power of the parasite will help me get rid of the parasite logic. And why do you look like that guy from the last tavern I had worked at for a few nights? He was... You, about your height, kind of looked like, he, I mean, he was, he was good looking, don't get me wrong. He just, you know, he just looks so much like him. It's so weird. I was thinking that. That's like been in the back of my head for a bit now. I just, why, who did you look like? And it was him, that guy. He liked his ale. I'm, you know, he didn't not, he didn't order too many. It was like one kind of thing. I don't know if he even ever paid attention to my performances. Huh. Wonder what happened to him. Anyways, um. Halson did mention, though, that these tadpoles, they've been modified with magic. Mayhaps you know anything about that? Yes. 
Olsen is correct. Oh? Your parasite is unusual. Okay. It is wrapped in magic that prevents its removal. Aha. Uh -huh. Until the source of the tadpole's magic is destroyed, any attempt to remove it will kill you. You were lucky that Olsen knew this. His instincts are right. The parasites were merely a symptom of a greater sickness in Faerun. Greater sickness. And what is this sickness exactly? The absolute aims are not yet clear to me. But its progress towards domination is clear. Oh? These parasites are more than illithid spawn. They are vessels for control. The infected hear the voice of the Absolute and believe it to be a god. So what is you it? You witnessed it yourself with Priestess Gut. That is how the cult of the Absolute is spreading. The highest of their rank, the True Souls, carry a tadpole just like yours. It is how they receive their orders. It is what makes them obey. When the order to transform is given, it will not be a matter of days. They will be mind flayers in an instant. Were it not for my protection, so would you. How is it that you're protecting me, then? What, do you have some alternate kind of magic? Is it what? What is it? How is this happening? I have powers of my own. Unique powers. But know that we are alike. How? Just like you, I was infected with a Mind Flayer parasite. Just like you, I seek to be free of it. I've been trying to escape from this evil for a long time. Once, I almost succeeded. Now, through you, I've been given a new chance. You can go where I cannot, and I can protect you from that evil. If we work together, we may turn this around. Hells, they need me. I have to go. All right. Is there anything I can do to help you in the meantime? No. I can handle this. For now. The power I used to protect you. I stole it from someone. Oh, convenient. They want it back. I can imagine. I will hold them off for as long as I can. But sooner or later, I will be worn down. You must discover the source of the magic that controls the parasites before that happens. The cultists are gathering at Moonrise Towers. So I've heard. Use the powers your parasite gives you to convince them you are one of them. And when you find the source of their magic, destroy it. Go. Our freedom depends on it. So, did we all have the same group dream again? Anybody, or was it just me this time? Karlak, did you have a visit? Another visit from the Golden Paladin. There we go. It said we'll get the answers we need about the tadpole if we infiltrate the cult. Yeah. Yep, I heard the exact same thing. <sighs> Feels like a trap, though, doesn't it? I know we need to go. I know we need to go and to visit and all this other stuff. And I just, you know what? Let's just go visit the cult. We don't need to use the tadpoles or Paris, whatever you want to call them. We don't need to use the little visitors in our brains. We can just go and say hi. And I can spin a story. We'll be fine. Indeed. Good. Glad we're on the same page. Okay. I will talk to you soon. I'm going to go check in about everybody else's dream. Make sure that nobody else got extra information that the rest of us didn't get. Astarian, tell me about yours. I had another visit from that dream figure. Yep. I take it you did too. Yep. It claims that if we infiltrate the heart of the cult that's giving out these parasites, we'll find the answers we're looking for. It gave me another gift too. Just like it did the first time it appeared. Rather generous. If you ask me. Too generous. Far, far too generous. It feels like a trap. This all feels like a trap. But whatever's at the heart of this cult, Astarian, we have to find out what it is. 
I still don't like it though. It all just, it feels wrong on a variety of levels, but what else are we gonna do? Mm. On the one hand, you're right. On the other, don't be so wet behind the ears. I'm not. Do you actually want something or are you just here to spoil my fun? Once again, I live to spoil your fun. So really and truly, I came to check in about your dream and also to spoil your fun. So um, pretty much a great morning so far. See you soon. Bye. Gail, how was your dream last night? I've been dreaming of our enigmatic visitor again. She told me our purpose was to take on this cult of the absolute, to infiltrate its ranks and bring it down from the inside. She even offered me greater powers, the result of some manipulation of the tadpole's psionic abilities. Given the magnitude of what we're up against, I see no harm in considering the benefit this offer might afford us. Could be the only way to reach this source in one piece. I don't know, Gail. The tadpoles are the problem. How can they also be the solution? Isn't doing anything that amplifies the tadpole pretty much just amplifying the problem that we continually find ourselves in, which is the fact that we've got a little thing in our brain that could make us go boom at any second and turn into this silithity thing with the... I am not meant for tentacles. Do you see this hair, Gail? Do you know how much effort this hair is? And you think that, no, I spend too much time on it. I've spent too much time perfecting the art of being a bard to become an illithid. I just, I don't know. I don't trust the visitor. I don't trust their intentions. Nothing. I don't trust any of it. I suppose you're right. We still see only a part of the picture. However much our visitor claims to show the full vista of options at our disposal. Exactly. I can't deny my curiosity, but, as you say, no harm in delaying it, for now at least. I mean, we can always change our minds later, but why rush into something before we understand the full ramifications of what we're about to do? But I haven't checked in with everybody else to see if they had some weird-ass dreams, too, so I'll see you soon. Who else? Will! Will, did you have a weird-ass dream about a visitor and your powers and your tadpole being awesome? I had... Another dream last night. Yep. The visitor came to me mm -hmm. and ordered me to penetrate the heart of the very cult that's spreading the infection. It gave me a tadpole gift too. Just like it did the first time it appeared. I suppose it hoped this would help. At first, I thought we should avoid these gifts no matter what advantage we gain. And yet, I can't help recall the words of my father. The best plan is the one that works. These powers could be enough to edge us towards victory. Well, when your dad gave you that little bit of wisdom, uh, the plan that works kind of thing, I don't think he ever meant the whole turning into an illithid thing. I mean, you, you said that, that all of the stuff that's happened to you, and now look, and you want to add turning into an illithid into the mix? I would sooner avoid all of these powers, all of the temptation, all of that. It feels like it. Why am I the only one that feels like this is a trap at this point? I feel like just, I mean, Carlac kind of felt like it was a trap too, but it just, it feels, this feels like an awful, ugly trap. And I hate the fact that my dream visitor was so good looking that sometimes I feel like I'm just going to give in to it. And that's weird because it was like the dude at the... Never mind. Sorry, I was going off on a tangent. But I would like to avoid all of this if possible. Then we do well to walk around it. Use these powers sparingly, if you must use them at all. Okay. Well, I'm going to go check in with Shadowheart and Lazel, but it was good getting your perspective. I'll talk to you soon. Halson, I'm going to assume you did not hear from a dream visitor last night, because you have no parasite to speak of, right? You wish to speak? No, no, no dream visitor, no nothing. No, I'm good. I just wanted to make sure that you didn't have any way to psychically connect to the rest of us, because that would have been weird. But at the same time, these tadpoles are weird. So wanted to make sure you were safe. Shadowheart, you want to talk about this? I had another dream. Which, I suppose, means you did as well. Did I ever. Whoever's reaching out to us truly does seem opposed to the Absolute, but wants us to embrace the tadpole. Venture right into the heart of the cult. Isn't that what we were going to do anyways? Perhaps we truly have a secret protector. 
Or we're walking into a trap. If you know that what you're walking into is a trap, is it still a trap at that point? I don't know. Using the tadpole feels like a trap. That feels like a weird trap. Walking into the heart of the absolute also feels like a trap, but I feel like we have no other choice. We gotta go rescue Will's dad. And I don't like the thought of a cult, like that I didn't start, I mean, I'd never start a cult, but you know what I mean? Like that I didn't have, you know, cause we can't trust, I'll talk to you soon anyways. Lazelle, tell me about your dream last night. I'm very, very, very curious to see what your visitor had to say. Another dream. Another order from that dubious visitor. They give you orders. It announced that we will find the answers we seek in the absolute cultist's lair and offered another generous gift. A persuasive creature. It tempts us with power, expresses its admiration, its adoration. Avert your eyes whenever it appears and do not avail yourself of this new power, no matter how alluring. You've no idea what damage it could do to us. How far into illithid madness it could drag us. Now, I'm actually not going to disagree. First, is this like the second time in like the last 24 hours I haven't disagreed with you on something? Lazelle, I feel like we're turning over a new leaf all of a sudden, but I too distrust all of this. I'm going to personally avoid using the powers. I mean, everybody else is welcome to make their own decisions, but until I know more, until I've got proof that this isn't going to hasten my journey into being, you know, tentacles and, and all that other stuff, I'm going to avoid it for now. Well chosen. Battles are won with swords, not mind games born of brain worms. Fair. Fair. And there will come a battle. Of that I'm most certain. The one truth that fell out of the dream figure's cankered lips. Okay. Well, I am going to go get us ready to leave, and I will see you soon. Good talk. All right, everyone, start packing up your stuff. We've got to get Yankee Crush to visit. Make sure you've dressed your best and all that. I don't know if it matters, but let's pretend that it does. <laughs>